Welcome back to The Search. I'm Rafe Mayer. I'm again joined by Bahram Haidari, a Sufi mystic author and television producer. Bahram, we had just got to the fascinating point. We, point. we have the arrival on the scene of Moses, and we have Jesus, and now we have Muhammad. And you were just telling us how that sort of completes the circle. Prophet Muhammad, the mission was to bring the news that everybody is expression of one God, and nobody is above anybody. So he said, in order to understand reality, by following the law of Moses and grace, grace of Jesus, one must come to knowledge, follow knowledge, go wherever there is knowledge. And by knowledge, he meant uh, that uh, knowledge in undifferentiated uh, way. He's not talking about knowledge as we break it. For example, this is law, this is sociology, this is uh, psy psychology. That means marfat. So it's the duty of every seeker to find knowledge where, wherever it is, and doesn't matter who it belongs to. If it belongs to anybody, even unbeliever, you must find that knowledge because the way to God comes from knowledge and law and the grace. Now, many look at Islam as being a rather cruel religion, uh, cruel to women, women's place in society, uh, cruel in the sense of cutting off hands and that sort of thing as penalizing people, cruel in the sense of penalizing a rape victim in uh, Saudi Arabia and so on. Why is that so? Because you're talking as a man of great peace. Well, <clears throat> when you look at Islam uh, or when you study Quran, it's, it is based on Torah and uh, New Testament and Quran itself. So it's nothing. So the laws that uh, being recommended is the laws that were recommended in Torah or Christianity. But we understand what Prophet Muhammad said, this is for this time. In future, this must change. You must move with science. His argument was that God is not outside you. He's with you, outside you, above you, under your feet, everywhere that you look is God. Therefore, God is not a person or some kind of expression of your thought. God is a reality. And you are a limited being. As a limited being, if you want to understand something that is infinite and undifferentiated and absolute, you must break all your idols. As long as you are idol worshiping, you're going to fall into all kind of uh, stupid ideas of cutting hand and killing this and that. Quran specifically says, if you kill an in innocent person, it's like killing the whole humanity. Well, I must press you a little bit on this, if I may, uh, uh, Baram. You haven't really explained why ayatollahs in Iran have done what they've done or why Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia do what they do in terms of cruelty. And uh, I, I guess what I'm asking are you, is your, uh, your notion, Sufism, is that in order to correct the Islam as being practiced now in many countries? Well, every religion or anything. If we, you and I read a book, you take your take, I take my own. So it's about our perception, you know, our background, our culture, and the way we've been brought up. Everybody define religious book the way they want to, every word by word. So in every religion you see there has been failures, not by, for example, the founders, but by those preachers and the one who came and advocate the religion. The because church, they my, my, my priest calls it the corporate church. By all means, because it's all about perception. Now, we understand, for example, you, when, you, when we talk about peace, peace has a meaning for you, has a meaning for me. But we understand there is a universal peace and there is a universal love that Jesus Christ is talking about. And that is totally different to what you and I express. The same way goes with Prophet Muhammad. What he expresses is totally different. He's talking about that universal understanding of unity of being. La ilaha illallah, that means you are obligated to respect anybody or anyone you see, whether it is any part of creation. Therefore, as a Muslim, you must be submitted and you must respect every part of uh, Whatever happens to you. Are you personally horrified when you see the victim of a rape go to jail? Of course, of course. I mean, uh, but the I, Wahhabi sect obviously aren't horrified well, because well, that's that's the way they do business. Well, Wahhabis, uh, they do things the way they want to. They justify. These are pre-Islamic thinking. When Prophet Muhammad came, he came to get rid of those pre-Islamic thinking. Uh, that was very destructive. It was about idol worshiping. 
it was about judgment, it was about greed, it was about lack of respect for humanity, women, and so. So what he did, Prophet Muhammad did, the first thing he did, he freed the slaves. Bilal Habashi was the first man, a black man that he freed. He came, he said, do not kill your women, because they, they were, the Arabs were killing women. He said, no, women are sign of beauty of God. So wherever he went, he liberated uh, the people, and that was the idea. Now, these things get obviously uh, abused by people who take over later on. And we, in history, we see all kind of wars and killing in the, the, the name of God that, and point, religion. The point being that Sufism is against that sort of thing. Of course. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the afterlife from the point of view of Sufism. And during the break, you're going to see a very interesting dance called the Swirling Dervishes. We have another segment to go with my guest, Baram Haidari, when the search continues after the break. <laughs> 